Today we will be exploring mushroom use in warfare. Specifically, we will just be looking at the use of the fly agaric mushroom or the Amanita muscaria, which I think is the most prevalent mushroom in warfare anyway. We've talked mainly of its use for religion and cults, though we haven't nearly covered everything, but lesser known is the mushroom's battle enhancing effects, which does in turn play a role in the overall myth and religion such as with the warrior's quests and the encounter with the dragon we talked about in a previous video. Legends like Gilgamesh, Arthur, and all the other ones were centered around returning with the special elixir. Always it was something to ingest. Sometimes it was directly the Amanita muscaria. Other times it was just legends or symbolisms derived from the mushroom and its abilities. The fascination and retelling of the hero's journey for that specific elixir perhaps makes more sense in context of its actual use in warfare and battle by warriors. So let's take a look. One of the most debated cases is the Viking Berserker Warriors. Berserk means bear sark, shirtless. It means they fought without defenses, with total abandon. Now, dried mushrooms have been found in their belongings, so the suggestion that they used Amanita muscaria for battle is certainly possible. But even if they didn't, there was an elite and secretive group of Viking warriors called the Ulfednar, which means wolf skin. They were shaman warriors who consumed Amanita muscaria in forest rituals before battles. The idea of animal warriors is common throughout the ancient world, and often seems to be accompanied by shamanic consumption of some special herb, oftentimes the fly agaric mushroom. So the Ulfed Nar was basically a cult that you had to be invited into. They were pretty much like assassins or special forces warriors, similar maybe to the Muslim Hashashin, who more than likely consumed the same mushroom, uh, which I did talk about in the Quran video. Before moving on, we need to go over the possibility of Amanita's combative effects. It contains Musimol, which is a GABA-A agonist, meaning it will give all sorts of sensory symptoms like hallucination, synesthesia, out-of-body experience, euphoria, and an interesting effect called Micropsy, which causes you to perceive everything as small. In that sense, it makes you large. If you are able to remove all of your fears, remove all pain, and make your opponent appear small and weak, you are going to fight with a fury and an unparalleled confidence. The vernacular is the same pretty much everywhere with mushroom warriors from history. In fact, is I think one way in which you can tell you are dealing with an account of mushroom warriors. Reports will say they fought with the fury of the gods, with the wrath or rage of the gods some extreme frenzy. But sometimes the words they're referred to as the sons of God, or the giants, or thunder warriors, or dragon warriors. Some Amanita uh, myth creature. These are themes of the Amanita and its rage-inducing abilities. I believe the mushroom adapts to what you are using it for. Perhaps adrenaline mixes with the musimol to alter the effects of the trip. But even if the mushroom was used the night or two days before in a preparation ritual, just having that world-changing experience with an ego death or a journey to the underworld, as ancient mythology would likely call it, you're going to fight with fervor. What is the fear of an enemy army going to do to you when you just saw God? But I do think it was used to induce rage during battles. And that ability of the mushroom to alter the perception of size is ultimately still used in modern pop culture to this day. Why do you think Mario consumes a fly agaric mushroom and grows larger and more powerful? Now, I don't know if the creator knew this specifically. It is so ingrained into our psyche, that relationship between giants or size and mushrooms. Of course, there is also Alice in Wonderland, where this sense of shrinking after the mushroom is the entire plot of the book. Even in Skyrim, the fly Amanita is used to make fiery potions, fire-resistant potions, and weapon improvement, and stamina potions. I'm sure you could name a thousand other stories, movies, and games where the fly Amanita is romanticized 
in use for some journey or battle. And this is probably one of the rare cases in human history where the romanticization and the legends of a particular thing happens to actually be its true biological, cultural, and religious usage. I think if you were to fight a mushroom warrior and you saw the way he looked at you and you get that sense of, you can tell what someone is thinking of you when they're looking at you. If someone sees you as an ant to be crushed, you will perceive that that's how they view you, right? And then you see him cut your friends down in an instant, you'd begin to think of that enemy as larger than life, as an unstoppable force, as a giant. And in the Old Testament times, this is exactly what we see. The Watchers, the Nephilim, or the giants, to understand them and those words is just meaning strong warriors. They were particularly powerful warriors. They were giants on the battlefield. The same metaphorical giant quality given by the Ammoni to Muscaria. They were sons of God. I went over the Bible in a video last year and will probably do more at some point in the future, so I don't want to go over too much old ground. But that entire region of the Levant, of where the Israelites, the Canaanites, the Philistines, the Babylonians, all of those groups and empires, they worshipped interchangeable storm, mountain-dwelling gods, derived from the same root words. They were all being symbolized by the Lebanese cedar tree, and of course the Ammonite grows symbiotically with that, the real fruit of the tree of knowledge. The Israelites often got their god confused with the gods of their neighbor and would end up incorporating their enemies as pantheon as devils in their own cosmology. Most famous perhaps is Malak and Beelzebub. The Philistine chief god was Beelzebub, meaning Lord of the Flies. The Ammonita was used by ancient people in that region as a fly catcher. As the mushroom naturally paralyzes flies that try to eat it, and also by placing it in a bowl of milk, the flies would be drawn to the milk and get stunned and drowned. So it was a way to keep flies and maggots out of your food. So to the ancient Philistines, this Lord of the Flies, it commands the forces of death, because flies were an indication of, of death and decay, because once they got in, disease would start to spread. So being able to control that force was seen as a godly ability within the mushroom. Now to bring it back to the military history, the Philistines were a extremely feared military force. They were pretty advanced in their weaponry and tactics, and they were known to be a drug culture. Most sources suggest they used henbane, which has a lot of the same effects as Amanita in many cases, and is actually a plant that is often suggested the berserkers used as well. It's in the nightshade family and could very well have been used by both berserker and the philistines. Most mushroom cultures will see used nightshade a lot as well. Perhaps they found ways to mix them, perhaps they were popular at different times. The one effect that henbane doesn't have, as far as I know, is that, is that uh, micropsy effect. So it was probably used more often by the average person while the Amanita was kept for the holiest inner circles or secretive groups or wealthiest or highest priests, or even maybe just the strongest warriors, and um, as an insecticide. The most famous of the Philistine mushroom warriors is Goliath. There's that reference to being a giant. On top of that, he probably was a big dude if he did exist. But David, like Solomon, was a reference to the mushroom. And so I think if a duel had taken place, it was between two rage-induced mushroom warriors. And if it was simply just battles, it was a battle of who had the favor of the gods. The entire Millie... The entire military history of the Bible is about which side had the favor of their God and therefore fought like madmen. I often think of that Israelite campaign as the Mushroom Wars because they were fighting over the land because ultimately that land contained God. It contained the mushroom. And so all of these mushroom ingesting armies and priests and it was just, uh, it was just a violent, trippy war. And I think that's exactly what the how the Old Testament reads. But, like I said, we can do more on that later. Way after that, 
uh, after the Roman occupation of the Holy Land, you have the Sakari around 70 AD. These were Jewish zealots who led rebellions and assassinations, and more than likely used the Ammonite Muscaria, much like the Ulfednar, and over a thousand years later, again with the Hashashin. So the Iliad is rife with drug references, especially among the Mycenae, who were already very familiar with mushrooms, being that we named Mycenaeum after their culture. And their whole culture was just based around mushrooms and mushroom mythology, with the likes of Heracles and Lycanthropy, the wolf forms. Perhaps uh, there's a link there to the Ulfednar with thunder gods, immortal warriors like Achilles, as well as the legendary Amazon warriors, probably all use the mushroom. I haven't talked about it much on this channel, but most widely accepted or talked about in the mythological use of the fly agaric is within the Hindu religion through the Vedas, in the form of the legendary drink called Soma, a brew, a drink, that was also personified as a god to be the master of plants and of sacrifices, quite like uh, Jesus or Dionysus. It also has an Iranian equivalent, Heoma. Agni, the Hindu fire god, stole it from the gods and gave it to mankind, just like Prometheus and the other fire-stealing motifs in mythology. Indra drank the Soma when fighting the demon serpent Vritra. In the Zoroastrian Avesta holy book, they say this about the Homoma, that it grants speed and strength to warriors, excellent and righteous sons to those giving birth, and spiritual power and knowledge. Celtic druids probably used the mushroom, and stories of Cúchulainn, an Irish as well as Scottish demigod that is often compared to Hercules, was known for his battle frenzies. I also think that there is a good reason to believe that Mesoamerican cultures like the Aztec used the fly agaric for combat, probably in the form of the jaguar warriors or some other elite group similar to them with animal form, again like the Ulfhidnar. We already know they ritually used mushrooms and other nightshade plants like Datura. They performed ritual sacrifices involving mushroom rites, uh, similar to Malak or the Norse, and allegorically to the Christians. But this is not only an ancient warfare. In 1814, in a war between Sweden and Norway, an anecdotal case states that some Swedish soldiers were, were, quote, observed by their officer to be seized by a raging madness foaming at the mouth. On inquiry, it was learned that the soldiers had eaten of the fly Amanita to whip up their courage to a fighting pitch, end quote. There is a report from a similar incident in 1945 where Soviet troops, possibly from Siberia, allegedly ingested mushrooms prior to a battle in Hungary, all for the same reasons. I'm sure you could, you could break down and find more cases during World War I and World War II. Russia itself has the most famous modern use of the mushroom in the form of the reindeer shaman, whose legends gave us all of the myths of Christmas a Amanita holy day, as it is the birthday of most of the fly agaric gods from history. You could go through China, Japan, Africa, the Americas, and other parts of Europe, finding cases here and there of the mushroom use, either for battle or religious use, or just as a fly killer. It is quite impressive the diversity of the mushroom and, it, and the variability of its names and associations and legends. But in looking at all these religions, historians and theologians and philosophers alike all say there is something innate about the human experience that gives commonalities to all religions. What it is, I think, they all have the same family of mushrooms, the same family of nightshade and other herbs. Those are what gives us our religions. It is the nature around us, especially the inexplicable side of that nature. I'm sure more could be dug up for this video, and I encourage you in the comments to say or link anything you heard from history or folk tales or just stories or legends about the Amanita from your country or some or something you know from history. I do want to bring up one more possible case, and it might be the most controversial of these, and it is with the Knights Hospitaller and the Knights Templar. 
I think both orders, when traveling to Jerusalem, ended up experiencing the mushrooms either through foraging in the wilderness or from local groups of people who still had to the mushroom and the Abrahamic religions. The infamous plain curled fresco was built by the Hospitaller Knights in the 12th century in France, suggesting, I think, their encounter with the mushroom or hearing stories which inspired that rendition of the Garden of Eden probably the most accurate one we have. I think the Templar Knights are the ones who probably used the mushroom most directly between the two orders. It goes hand in hand with the secret order of warriors and some of the legends surrounding them, like their discovery of ancient artifacts underneath the Temple of Jerusalem that gave them power, knowledge, and religious fervor. I think they just found the mushroom and therefore God. The themes of masonry and the precursor to the Freemason group themselves, while the tradition of using the mushroom was probably lost either from the beginning of the Freemasons, or when the Templars ended, or somewhere along the way, and it just became like a club. That's how I imagine it going. Maybe it's still in use. Who knows? But that original Freemasonry was basically a mathematical and architectural society in which these principles which they believed controlled the universe, the language of nature and the divine. They came from the Temple of Solomon story from the Old Testament, in which Solomon commanded the demons to construct the temple. The Temple of Solomon is a Jewish mysticism practice of some mental process, probably akin to the Kundalini, just in a different form. They liked geometry and numbers in the Kabbalah, so that's what the Freemasonry was inspired by. And the way to obtain that Temple of Solomon would have been known to a few through the Ammonites Muscaria, primarily the sun and moon, the Solomon. The mushroom is called the moon or sun in many instances. So I think a couple orders of the Crusaders rediscovered the mushroom and kept it a secret. And maybe sometimes used it for battle. Maybe there are cases of that. It's certainly not outside the realm of possibility. Most groups that touch the mushroom realize how valuable it is and also how dangerous and hard to figure out. So they keep it a secret as best they can. You want the gods on your side. You don't want your enemies getting a hold of it. So then you also make sacrifices, trying to earn the favor of the immortal flesh of the gods that appears out of nowhere from the underworld. You can eat the mushroom and fight with the fury of the gods. Thanks for watching.